Hey everybody, it's your girl Herbal Farm Sister. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about aphids. So aphids, they are in the order Hemiptera, they are true bugs. Um, what separates them from the caterpillars and the, and the flea beetles is that they do not have chewing mouth parts. They actually have piercing sucking mouth parts. So they have this long like beak that goes, that they use and they stick it down into a plant and they actually suck the sap out of the plants. Um, aphids, there's hundreds of different types of aphids. So aphids, they come in all, all types of colors and things like that. There are some that are able to uh, transmit disease, some of that are host specific, where they only infest certain plants. Then there's some that are generalists and they'll feed on any type of plant. So um, just with aphids, just know um, that they do not chew on leaves. So some of these methods that I just recently talked about, they're not gonna be effective on them because they don't chew on the actual leaf. They actually stick their, their uh, mouth part down into the plant like a needle and they suck up the juices out of the plant. Aphids have one of the most interesting life cycles. First off, all aphids undergo incomplete metamorphosis, which means egg, nymph, and adult. Things get weird though. Aphids can have multiple generations per year. The wingless females in the spring and summer will reproduce asexually, meaning they do not mate and will actually give birth to live aphid nymphs that are all female. These nymphs are all clones of herself. She can birth multiple nymphs in one day. These nymphs will undergo four nymphal stages before they become adults. They do this by shedding their skin as they grow. Adults do not shed skin. If conditions are warm, which is usually between 85 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, a nymph can become an adult within about a week. These newly emerged female adults then start to reproduce asexually as well. This is how you get so many aphids in such a short period of time. On a plant, you can have multiple generations and multiple life stages at any given time. When fall comes around in areas that experience harsh winters, females will produce winged females and males that when they mature will mate and lay eggs. These eggs can survive the harsh winter and in the spring the cycle starts all over again. When overcrowding occurs or when food becomes depleted, the wingless aphids will develop wings and disperse to new areas. So the way you control aphids is, uh, again, you can always start with the barrier. The barrier is going to be your first line of defense. Now if you didn't have a barrier up and you start experiencing aphids, then you're going to have to use a, some type of spray that you can uh, put together. So that spray, it can contain neem oil, it'll contain um, some type of uh, organic soap, like cast out soap, I always recommend cast out soap, and then you'll need your sprayer and you'll need some water. Um, here are the measurements that you'll need per gallon of water to actually set up this particular uh, spray. So if you have a really, really, really bad infestation of aphids, Along with spraying, you're going to actually have to go in also and wipe the leaves off. Aphids, they do not bite. They're not toxic to humans. Um, but if the infestation is bad, spraying them is not going to do any good because there's too many there. So what you want to do is you want to go in, you will spray first, then wipe as many of the aphids off as you can. You can just use a, a sponge or some type of paper towel or a rag or something. Wipe those off and then spray the plant again. Um, if the infestation isn't really bad, you can spray this on here. And what happens is the, uh, the soap and the uh, oil will actually plug up the um, spiracles on the insect to where it can't breathe. Insects do not breathe through like a nose like a human. They actually breathe through the sides of their body on their abdomen through spiracles. The reason that you add the soap in the, uh, into the solution is because oil and water do not mix, you have to have something that causes emulsification, which causes the, the oil to actually mix in into the water. So the soap does that. What the soap does is it goes around those fat 
those fat globules and it'll actually put like a little for fortress around it and it'll allow it to be mixed into the water. So that's how you're able to uh, make this solution. And that's what actually gums up the aphids spiracles and they die because they can't breathe. Another issue that comes along with aphids is ants. So if you see aphids, you're most likely gonna see ants on your plants. Ants love aphids because they produce honeydew. Honeydew is what they excrete after they've fed so much, they kind of engorge themselves and then they must, you know, go to the bathroom. So they excrete what is called honeydew. It's sugary, it's, it's kind of like nectar, it's very sweet, and ants love that. So what ants do is they actually will farm and treat the aphids like cattle. And ants will actually take aphid from plant from plant to plant and they will farm them. They will, they will protect them. They will make sure that they have everything they need so that they can keep getting that honeydew. So um, if you see aphids, if you see ants on your plants, most likely you have aphids on your plants. So once you get the aphids under control, the ants will go away. Ants do not damage plants unless they're like leaf cutter ants. And we don't really have a lot of those here in the United States. I don't even know if we really do have any. I know they're in Central and South America, but you know, things get brought here all the time. So there could be some colonies of leaf cutter ants that I just, you know, haven't came across yet. But for the most part, if you see ants on your plants, the ants are not damaging your plants themselves, but they're bringing things onto there that will damage your plants. And that's, they're bringing the aphids on there. So get the aphids under control by using the solution or using the barrier. And there are some uh, biological controls that you can release uh, as well. Um, uh, you know, ladybugs are very beneficial. They will actually feed on aphids. The only thing with ladybugs to order is that when you put them in an area, they usually don't stay there. And you can try to you can try to cage them in with the netting, but for the most part, the ladybugs that are sent through the mail, they have been taken out of hibernation. And so when they wake up, they're confused about what's going on and things like that. And so what happens is they usually just leave the area. They don't stay where they are. Um, the best thing you can do is create an environment that has, you know, multiple types of plants and things that will attract, you know, predators, parasitoids, and all types of things to your area so that you, you automatically have those things there. Um, a lot of the ladybugs and things, they use plants, they, they feed on nectar. So if you have flowers there, as well as they use some of the plants to hide and things like that, that will attract them to your, your garden. So you don't have to actually go out and purchase them. So this concludes the video on aphids. If you have any questions about this video or any other videos I've posted, you can send me an email at urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. The final video will be coming tomorrow and it will be covering harlequin bugs. If you like the content that I present, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos.